Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it's that time of the week. We're back for another weekly educational lecture. This week's topic, guys, is on relative strength, market timing, as well as the truth about Wall Street, okay? Um, this presentation is a little bit longer in terms of the slides. There's about 25 or 30 slides. Normally there's about 10 to 20 slides, um, but time-wise it's about 45 minutes, so it's not that bad. Uh, but we dig deep um, into really the truth about Wall Street and why technical trading and technical charts are so much more valuable than fundamentals. Um, and also we talk about what edge, what advantage do you really have in the markets when you're dealing with Wall Street, when you're dealing with big business? upgrades, downgrades, news reports, uh, those types of things, guys, is, is one of the topics that I focus on this week. But before I get into that, I talk a little bit about relative strength trading as well as market timing trading and why it's so important to make sure you have relative strength or relative weakness when you're taking a trade because it makes the market so much less relevant, which means there's a higher likelihood that your trade will work even if you're a little bit off on your market timing. So I, I start out the lecture with that, guys. And then, like I said, we talk about the blunt truth about Wall Street, what Wall Street really thinks about you, okay, and what you can do about it and how you can pay them back for all the things that they do to us, okay? You need to understand these things because then at least you have a fighting chance on how to make money in the markets. Many of you guys out there are focused on the wrong things. You really think certain things matter that don't. You think an upgrade means a stock's going to go higher, and you think a positive news report means a stock's going to go higher, and you think analysts actually are looking to help you. They are not, okay? Hint, Wall Street doesn't like you very much, or at least they don't think very much of you, okay? So you want to check this one out, guys. It's a little bit different, but it's very interesting and fascinating. You'll see some things that maybe you haven't seen before, um, but anyway, nonetheless, it's a very good content and will help you become a better trader. Don't forget, $1 30-day trial in the live traders chat room, guys. Um, you can look at the link in the description. $1 30-day trial for one month in the live traders chat room. And as always, guys, if you enjoy these uh, videos, please click that like button um, and subscribe. Why not subscribe? Um, we get these videos every week. I actually post two a week now, guys, uh, a Wednesday educational lecture and then a Saturday trade review of two or three trades from the previous week. All right, Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. Today's lecture topic is relative strength and us against them. So RS stands for relative strength uh, and then us against them. Focus on what's really important. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, a little bit about upgrades, downgrades um, and news and all that other stuff. But before we get into that stuff, I want to talk about uh, what I find is one of the most important things that I use to be a successful trader, uh, and that is relative strength and market timing. Um, so you guys at the moment, you see that and you, the first thing you're thinking of is, oh, well, if I can get relative strength and market timing, that's great. And I would agree with that relative strength and market timing is fantastic, but it's hard, right? It's challenging to time all your trades perfectly with the market. So a lot of people misconstrue or misconstrue, sorry, the, the concept or idea of market timing. Uh, market timing doesn't mean that exactly the moment the market goes higher that your trade goes higher, right? I mean, that does happen, but that's not the idea of market timing. So um, you're going to come to see here that relative strength, the first thing you want to think about is relative to what, okay? When I say relative strength, I'm talking about relative to the market, okay? Is the stock stronger than the market? Like, for example, today, PEN, P-E-N-N, -N, was stronger than the market almost the entire day, and the market was going lower to the point where the market was getting hammered and Penn was pivoting and going higher. That's relative strength to the market. So let's take a look here, guys, um, because the first beginning of this, I'm going to have to get through a little quick just so we're not here for four hours. All right. So MTFA means multiple time frame analysis plus market timing equals powerful moves. So this is just your standard. This is what a standard good trade looks like. Let me explain. All right. So we have a stock will start on the daily. The, the stock is gapping up over a red bar right at the top of the pivot. That red dotted line here is pivot resistance, 
okay? So this is just a normal good trade. This isn't even relative strength. This is just a good gap with a really good three bar play entry with a market that has a very similar, not quite a three bar play, but similar to a three bar play. So this is what every trade in a perfect world should look like. It's just that here's the problem. To get the market to give you the exact same pattern the stock is giving you is damn near impossible. It's not impossible. It's just one of those like happens less than 10% of the time type things. So if we had to focus just on this, where you have a great gap with a great pattern on the stock and the market was giving you the exact same look, we would never trade. So if we take this out of the equation because it doesn't happen often enough to be viable, then that leaves us with what? Trying to find stocks that are unique, stocks that don't care about the market. This is the whole crux, the whole core of what relative strength is all about. Find a stock that flips its finger to the market and doesn't care what the market does. If you do that, well, you can erase the market from your charts. And that's a good thing. It's one less thing you have to worry about. Okay. And no, I am not referring to penny stocks that are one trick ponies that get halted 17 times in the middle of a day and you try to get rich quick on them. It's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to stocks that have really good level one and level two gaps that can be on their own page. Penn would be an example of that today. So let's take a look. Okay. So what do we have here, guys? Well, we have a 15 minute stock and a 15 minute market. Okay. This is relative strength. You're going, well, wait, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. So first, let's focus on the market. Let's focus on the market. On the right-hand side, we have the market which gapped up slightly, not much, ripped off the open, and then what did what? Pulled back. Red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar. So we have a gazillion red bars here, but note, where are we pulling back to? We're pulling back to what? The green line, which is support. And we're back near the moving average, and it's a stock that is previously, or I should say was previously in an uptrend, right? So the day before the market was in an uptrend, today the market pulls back to support, and you think to yourself, even if the market doesn't rip higher, it should stop going lower. Let me repeat this. Even if the market doesn't go higher here, it should stop going lower here because it's at support and it's extended into support. Extended into support usually equals a bounce. So now what? Well, the market bounced early. The stock bounced early. But here's the difference. When the market started getting hammered, the stock pulled back also, but it didn't get hammered nearly as badly as the market. Right? So the market went up two bars. This stock went up four bars. The market pulled back seven bars. This stock pulled back three bars. This is an example of good relative strength because the stock is showing it's above the moving average, the market is in the middle of the moving average. The stock is about a 50% retracement, right? Pivot high right here, pivot low here. It's about in the middle, give or take, it's about the middle. This, the market went 100%. So all in all, this stock is showing a lot more strength than the market. So what do you think is likely to happen the second the market turns the corner and goes higher? The, the stock rips. Why? Because it's been stronger than the market all morning. So this is a good example of relative strength, okay? Market is ahead, or I should say, the stock is ahead of the market. So when the market pivots, it's gonna rip. And we saw that today again with a stock like Penn, when the market did finally pivot and go a little higher, Penn ripped, like truly ripped, okay? Now, what about this, okay? Now we have what? Let's focus on the stock first, okay? Let's focus on the stock first, okay? So this stock gapped down and bullied, right? It gapped down, it opened down here, okay? And then it ripped higher for three bars, pulled back, gave you lower high, lower high, and you have a buy setup. The buy setup is on a 50% retracement at the rising moving average, okay? And you could argue maybe even at a little bit of level two support or minor support. So far you're looking at it and going, oh, sweet. Right? That's the first thing you're thinking of. Because, well, off the open, the stock had strength, right? The first three bars of the stock were green. The first three bars of the market were not, right? Green, red, green. Okay? So the market gapped down pretty good here. The stock didn't gap down that much. The stock rips, the market chops around. But here's the difference, and this is why there's a little question mark here. As the market pulls back and is looking at what? 
kind of a choppy area. Sure, you could argue maybe there's a double bottom here. No, this is not a three bar play. No, this is not a three bar play. Did I mention this isn't a three bar play? Why? It's sitting on support. But nonetheless, you could make the argument that, well, maybe the market does a double bottom here and rips. Or you could make the argument, well, the market is just going to go lower here. Why am I commenting? I'm commenting because you have a decision to make. You see, when you look at market timing, when you look at relative strength, how do you know? How do you know that you're not buying or taking a buy setup a couple minutes before the market just rolls over? Right? I mean, this is support on the green line. The market went lower the next bar and then completely engulfed out of nowhere. Now, why? I have no idea. We could argue because of the double bottom support, but that's regardless of the double bottom. So that's a pretty potent bar. But you had to make the decision to get into the trade long before the market told you what it was going to do. Let me repeat that. You had to get into this trade before you knew what the market was going to do. I'm bringing this up because that's a judgment call. That isn't like the previous slide where we're like, oh, no brainer. The stock's been showing strength all morning. The market is at support. The market is extended into support. And it's likely, there's a much higher likelihood in the last slide the market would bounce. We take a look at this slide and you sit there and you go, well, I can't say the market's going to bounce. It's been nothing but weak all morning. And maybe it's just resting before it goes lower. Well, at 10 o'clock where this pink arrow is, you got to get into the stock right there. You're already in it. Next bar in, market topping tail, stock topping tail. Ultimately, in this case, it paid off. But this is not, and I repeat, not one of those, quote, no-brainer trades. This is not a no-brainer trade. You have to make a genuine decision here. The pattern is great on the stock. Yes, it's showing relative weakness, but if the market tanks here, you're in trouble. Judgment call. Why? This is reality trading. You're not going to just get all the perfect examples. You're going to have to make some judgment calls in trading once in a while, even when you have a really good trading plan. Every once in a while, this, this happens. Okay. Now, now I want you to take a look at something here. Okay. So on the left, we have a stock. Okay. On the right, we have the market. So here we have a stock that chopped all morning long. Okay, and finally breaks out around lunchtime. All right, finally breaks out around lunchtime, goes up, pulls back. Now take a look. Where it's pulling back to is some support. It's a little bit more than 50%, but it is a buy setup. Unequivocally, it's a buy setup because the stock broke out and now it's pulling back to a support area. Generally speaking, we call this an initial breakout and a first pullback. I'll repeat. Generally speaking, we call this an initial breakout and then this is a first pullback. If you saw one of my YouTube videos from a while back, the first pullback is actually the safest place on the chart to buy a stock. So the question at the top is, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Well, one, 100% retracement would be 940. This is going to 955. So no, it's not almost 100% retracement. It's like a 70, maybe 75% retracement, like I said. Point is, is everything okay? Well, first inclination would be, well, it has relative strength to the market. That's positive. We can't argue that. The market gapped up and rolled. This stock gapped up and went sideways. True. So we have relative strength, right? The market did not break out. This stock broke out. So first things we look at for me, one is relative strength. I, that checks the box. It's definitely stronger than the market. Okay. When I'm talking about the market, guys, I'm talking about the QQQ or the SPY, the spiders, okay, IWM, those things. That's what I'm referring to when I say the market. Okay, so the, the first test is passed. It's stronger than the market. Second test, is it a pattern? Yes, it is. Third test, is it a good pattern? All right, so those are three things I asked. Now, good pattern is subjective. Obviously, you know, we have rules to what a good pattern looks like. So I'm looking at this going, all right, it's not bad. I mean, this is a stock that honestly could probably rip the rest of the day. And we're looking here and going, oh, all right, the market on the right here put in a double bottom retest. It's bouncing, chopping around, and then it honestly looks like it wants to go higher. It really does. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. The market looks like it wants to kind of fill that pullback area. The stock looks good enough and it's shown strength to the market all day. So you're, you're balancing this out going, it looks like a worthy risk. Even if the pattern isn't perfect, perfect, 
the stock is showing so much strength to the market and the market does look higher, it's probably worth the risk. But what's wrong? I'll give you a hint. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen today. You know, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, snap diggity dog. You just took this trade five minutes before FOMC. Five minutes before FOMC. That's dumb. I'll repeat, that's just dumb. Why? Because you have no idea. I don't care who you are, okay? I don't care if you're the Fed chief, the Fed chairman chief, whatever you want to call him, the big dog. He doesn't know, or she doesn't know, depending on what era we're in. They don't know what the market will do when they come out with their report. You don't know either, so don't think that you do. See, I love these traders out there that are like, oh yeah, I know the company earnings are going to be great. Well, we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes, okay? You don't know, so don't think that you do know. I don't care if you know that they're going to raise rates or lower rates. You don't know what the market's going to do, all right? Get your ego out, stuff it in the closet, and forget about it. So my point I'm simply making is you do have to check on news reports from time to time, particularly FOMC. I don't trade FOMC. So note, the market was looking higher until the report came out and smack, right? And over here, things were looking good until the report came out smack and you would have lost on that trade. Now, some of you right now are going, Chad, but you said you don't care about news. I don't. I don't. There's only two things I care about with regard to news. FOMC, which I usually am never trading late enough to care, 2 o'clock, 2.15, I'm never, very, very rarely, maybe a day a year, am I trading that late in the day. And two, the only other thing I genuinely care about is if you're trading a stock that has a specific report, for example, if there's an oil report coming out and you're trading ExxonMobil, you might not want to be in ExxonMobil at 11 o'clock when that oil report comes out or 10.30 on Wednesday, whatever, okay? You don't want to be doing that. Okay, so think about what I'm saying there. Just think about that. So there are times to not trade and FOMC or something specific to the stock you're trading would matter. So now, all right, sorry, whoops. This is an example of an economic calendar. I don't generally care about reports. So when it looks at ISM, non manufacturing I don't care. The only two on here are three I care about are natural gas, petroleum, and FOMC. Why? Because I might be trading ExxonMobil or I might be trading Chevron and all of a sudden there's a, a, a petroleum report out. That's a problem because you don't know. I know you all think you know, you just don't. If you did know, you wouldn't be listening to me right now. You'd be on your yacht somewhere. So you don't know, okay? So they're the only things that I care about. FOMC and maybe an oil report or a natural gas report or maybe a home builder report if you're trading a home building stock. But if this stock is, if the report is not directly related to the specific stock that I am in, I do not care about news. It doesn't matter. Okay? All right. So now let's move on. We talked a little bit about market timing, a little bit about relative strength. Now, yes, I would normally put more slides in, but I have another topic that I want to cover that's going to take more slides. So I would normally put two or three more relative strength or relative weakness slides in there, but I just don't have the time right now. Okay? All right. Technical trading versus fundamental trading, all right? This has been a discussion for the ages for a very long time, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get into this in like super detail. I'm just gonna show you what really happens in the world, okay, versus what you think happens in the world. And the other thing I wanna comment on as well is a lot of people consider technical trading or traders gamblers because most of them honestly look like gamblers. So I get why they say that. But one of the biggest differences before I get into the charts, one of the biggest differences between fundamental folks and technical traders is most fundamental traders that I have met or investors, they don't have a stop loss, right? They believe in a company enough that they ride it through anything. Well, ask people who own Dell how that worked. Okay, seriously, ask them how that worked. All right, and a lot of other companies. All right, so we'll get into that in a little bit, but I don't want to touch upon it now. So let's do this. Technicals versus fundamentals. Now, you guys realize that we rely on candlestick charts. I don't care about news. I don't care about the credit risk or sales figures or the management team or who the CEO is or what the PE ratio is. I do not care. Truly, truly, truly do not care. Okay, it's irrelevant as it says here, guys, because the chart tells us everything we need to know everything we need to know, which is the flow of money. All right, guys, you're kidding yourself if you don't think 
that CEOs don't go on the television and literally look you straight in the eye and lie straight to your face. It's exactly what they do. Why? They have an agenda. They have an agenda. And their agenda worries about their company only and doesn't worry about your investment in their company. Okay? They only care about themselves. All right? You guys all think those people, and here a little side note. Some of you know this, some of you don't. You know that the vast majority of the people that go on like Fox and CNBC and Maria Bartiromo, you know that they pay to be on there? Like 50 grand to 100 grand to be on there. Yes, this is true. Most of these hedge funds, you see, that go, they pay to be on there. Some are invited, don't get me wrong. There are some people on there that are just there because their knowledge is good. A lot of them pay to be on there. So when you're watching television and you see some hedge fund manager being interviewed by Maria Bartiromo or whoever, Bob Pisani, they're likely paying to be on that interview. So how good are they really if they have to pay to be on TV? They have an agenda. Okay, they have an agenda. Stick to the chart, guys. Look, every time a trade is placed, okay, that trade forms a tick. That tick forms a bar. That bar forms a chart, and that chart forms patterns. Okay, and those patterns are what we are after. It's the flow of real money, whether you're in it, LeBron James is in it, or Joe Schmo is in it. If you bought that stock, you're represented in the chart. Okay, all right, next. Guys, we've been charting the market forever. So if it's worked forever, why would it stop now? I'm not kidding here. This chart goes back to 1900, 1900, 120 years. Why would it magically stop working now? It will never stop working because it's based on human emotions. There's a breakout here in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, right in that range. There's a climactic buy setup and a climactic sell setup, the 29 crash, and then here in the 30s, okay? There's buy setups all over the place. This, I mean, it's based off human behavior and humans program computers as well. So don't give me your HFT garbage either. Patterns will work forever. The day they stop working is the day that Robots take control of the world, and it's, uh, what is that from Terminator? I can't remember it, but you guys remember it, all right? That's the Skynet, yeah. That's when it'll stop working. So stop the nonsense. Just stop the garbage. Focus on the chart. It's worked for 120 years. My guess is it's gonna work for another 120, okay? So, how about news? I, you guys love news. I get it in the chat room every stinking day. Hey, Jared. Um, and I'll show one actually from a few days ago. What about this stock? You know, they, they, they just came out with a new phone or this. Or, are you kidding me? Just because they came out with a new product doesn't guarantee they're going to go higher. 15% decline on good news on Vertex. This is, a, this is pretty old, this chart. Vertex showed significant positive results on a drug in phase two trials. Gaps down nasty. <sighs> Follow the chart. Who cares about the news? Just follow the chart. If this is a gap down and it's a good enough gap to trade, I will short it. It's that simple. Well, let's not kid ourselves. It's that simple. All right. Let's take a look at another one. Here's some more news for you. More news. Q Core. September. This is old. I get it. It's old. Quest Core price target raised, all right, to 69 from 59 at Oppenheimer. After meeting with Quest Core's man, blah, 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 blah. Wow. That's great. And it dropped down to $22 that day. 22 stinking dollars, but the price target was raised to 69. Guys, I'm gonna give you a little hint. Wall Street doesn't care about you. Wall Street will do anything. They'll push this stock lower, try to get shares cheaper, and then rip it back up. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes too. Okay, don't just blindly think good news means long and bad news means short, all right? Oh, look at this. Here's an upgrade. An upgrade. Goldman Sachs upgraded NVIDIA. It was only up 300% when they finally decided to upgrade it. Good idea to buy the upgrade? You decide. So Goldman Sachs upgraded NVIDIA in 2011 after a 300% pop, and it took that stock five years to retest that area. Five years to retest that area. Now, why do you think Goldman would want to upgrade a stock that's already up 300%? Guesses, anyone? It's already up 300%. Who in their right mind would upgrade a stock? Anybody? Thank you, Matt. To sell their position. Get one last little pop, which is exactly what they got, right? Which is exactly what they got. 
And then they're just going to sell their position to you. And you're left holding the bag. Get over it, guys. Follow the chart. The chart clearly said this stock was massively extended. Ridiculously extended. You're going to buy it because Goldman upgraded it? Are you nuts? Follow the chart, okay? Oh, oh my gosh, here's another one. Here's Netflix. Again, old, I get it. Merrill Lynch downgraded Netflix after a 200-point drop. Guys, where is Netflix today? I, we don't have to talk about where Netflix is today. Okay, we don't need to talk about it. Why would you downgrade a stock after it just dropped from, oh, I don't know, $47 down to 10? All right? It's insane. But hey, they downgraded, so it must be a short. Exactly so they can buy more of it. Guys, they're doing the opposite of what they're telling you because they want to make more money and they're using you as their vice to do so. Oh, here it is. Here it is. This was recent. This was like a couple weeks ago. Somebody in the chat room, sorry I left your name in here. Normally I delete your name. I apologize. Pins had a price. This is right from this chat room. The chat room you guys are sitting in right now. This is a comment from a week ago. Pins had a price upgrade by Wells Fargo from 28 to 30 on Thursday, but surprisingly, the price is going down and down since. And Jared, what's the catch here? Oh, oh my God, maybe Wells Fargo doesn't care about you. Imagine that. No, of course they do. They're big business. They always, Monsanto loves us. That's why they put chemicals in all our shit. It's money, guys. It's a five letter word, money. And guess what? For any of you thinking otherwise, if you were in their position, you'd probably do the same thing. Let's be honest about it. If you were in their position, you'd probably do the same damn thing. Okay? That's life. Point for us is, this is garbage upgrade to $28, $30. Why is it going lower? Who cares? Move on from it. Get over your bad selves. You're not as bad as you think you are, if you know what I mean. All right? Okay. Here's the traditional approach. Here's the buy and hold approach. You know, because I left that one out. We talked about upgrades and downgrades. We talked about news. Now let's talk about traditional. Let's just buy and hold, man. How's GE looking? Yeah, that looks like a great investment. 20 years later, and you're down about 80% on your investment. So you go buy GE over here, 2001. Hell, I don't care. Buy it here in 2006. I, whatever. Hell, buy it in 2017. How's that going for you? Now, why am I singling out GE? Because it's one of the single well most respected blue chips of all time. Of all time. They don't get more well respected than GE over the past hundred years. Follow the flow of money. The flow of money is represented on this chart. If you traded GE as a long-term investment with no floor, with no stop loss, you are married to this for the rest of your life right now. Ever. It's not ever going to get back to $60 ever again. Not ever. Bank on it. Okay? Oh, you're right. I just picked, I just cherry picked one. Because it doesn't happen to other big companies. Didn't happen to Citigroup. It's not ever happening to Enron. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Damn it. Where'd that come from? Bear Stearns, Enron, WorldCom, AIG. General Motors at one point. Oh my, it doesn't ever happen to big companies. Guys, don't be an idiot. All right, I used the word fool to be nice, but don't be an idiot. Don't marry your bias so badly like a lot of Tesla people. Let's not go there. Tesla's worth more than General Motors and Ford put together. They sell 300,000 cars a year. There's some serious speculation going on there. Does that mean Tesla's going to go bankrupt? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying human beings speculate all the time and they believe their opinion is meaningful. It's not. The chart is meaningful. Your opinion doesn't matter. The chart is what matters because the chart is the flow of money. It's the flow of money. Now, just in case, I just thought maybe you guys thought, oh, well, Jared's just full of himself and he thinks because he was on Wall Street, he knows something. Uh, and then he's just pitching technical charts. I want you guys to see what companies really think of you. All right, I want you to see what companies really, really think of you, okay? These are real emails, real internal memos. All right, let's take a look. 
Shitbag, nuclear holocaust, subprime meltdown, Mike Tyson. Morgan Stanley bankers openly joked about a toxic investment they were creating in 2007. And these are the nicknames they were going to call it. The bankers later agreed upon the name Stack. They love you, don't they? They're in your corner. They're fighting for you. Come on. Let's go through this quickly because I have more to cover, a lot more to cover. All right? Rating agencies continue to create an even bigger monster, the CDO market. Let's hope we are all wealthy and retired by the time this house of cards falters. Hmm, interesting. While they're selling the same stuff to you. While they're selling the same stuff to you. Okay? Let's keep going. More and more leverage in the system. The whole building's about to collapse any time now. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? That's the vice president of of um, Goldman Sachs, the vice president of the company. Hmm, interesting. You know, he's got your back, I'm sure. Let's keep going. Institutional investor. What's so interesting about GOTO except banking fees? Merrill analyst, nothing. Wow, that's awesome. But they're selling it to you. Let's keep going. Horrible, a disaster, and a POS or, you know, piece of shit. Encouraged investors, Blodgett encouraged investors to buy stocks that he privately wrote in emails were not good investments. Wow, that sounds like a real upstanding guy. The kind of person you want to follow and invest with, isn't it? Wow, it gets better. There's two more. We're almost done. Okay. I mean, come on. We pay you to rate our deals and the better the rating, the more money we make. What's up with that? How are you possibly supposed to be impartial? <laughs> Somebody admitting the truth. Imagine that. Okay, and let's finish with one more. Okay. We have another big fixing tomorrow. And with the market move, I was hoping we could get LIBOR as high as possible. Somebody wants them to manipulate LIBOR. Wow, that's fantastic. Guys, these are real emails. You really believe Wall Street cares about you? Get over your big bad self. They don't. They only care about themselves. Guess what? Most human beings work that way. We all do. You care about your kids more than my kids. That's human nature. Me, so me. Everybody's an NFL wide receiver. Me, 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 baby. Okay? So if you think that these people care about you, they don't. That's the whole purpose here. Those charts are the only thing that's real in your life. Now, I'm not saying they're not occasionally manipulated. Of course they are. Right? Everything's manipulated. So you got to understand that fundamentals are manipulated more than anything. Now, let's go one more step further before I get back into a couple charts. Okay. 2017 in Perv Invest Investopedia, 9,700 hedge funds in the world. 2019, so this article was written just under a month ago. Hedge fund returns badly lagged the stock market in 2019. Hedge funds returned 6.96% on average throughout 2019. Just FYI, the market was up 25 to 30%, depending on the market you're talking about. So the pros are human too, and like a football coach trying to outthink his opponent, and yet they only ends up outthinking himself. This is what hedge funds do. They don't care about you either is what I'm trying to say. Here's one more statistic. All right, we'll get into the end, don't worry, of this stuff, and then we'll get back into some charts. From 1970 to 2005, okay, and I can't imagine it's changed in the last 15. There's 355 funds that were around during that 40 or 35 year period that lasted that whole time. Nine in a 35 year period, nine, I'm gonna repeat that, nine in a 35 year period of 355 beat the market by more than 2%. Three showed sustained outperformance. That means 97.5% underperformed the market average. And by the way, they charge two and 20, most of them. Those fees are coming down because people are seeing that the wool's been pulled over their eyes and they're realizing, wow, they can't, I mean, they're not doing me any good. What are the odds you picked one of those funds? I'll tell you the odds, two and a half percent. I know you think you're great, but the odds you actually picked it are two and a half percent. Okay? This was done by Vanguard, why? Obviously, there could be some slight bias here because Vanguard believes in total market funds. The point is, is this is what you're seeing in terms of hedge funds saying they're great, but the reality is not true. You saw what Goldman Sachs thinks of you. You see what Barclays thinks of you. You see what Merrill Lynch thinks of you. And we also looked at news 
upgrades, downgrades. We looked at general in terms of um, fundamental analysis. Now let's go one more step and then I promise we'll get into some charts. One more step. Now let's take a shit on our own industry. Let's do it. Let's be real about shit. Okay. This is what you see all the time when you Google trading. Trader turns 1500 into a million in three years. This is a real article. I, I just copied and pasted these. How I showed a 16 year old to turn 500 into 520 grand. Zero to a million in 18 months trading Forex. Hey, how Fred made a million dollars of 40 trades. And hey, how a hippie turned 583 into gazillions while chopping wood and driving for Lyft. Okay, this is the stuff that you guys see, okay? 5K into 1.3 million in three trades. This is actually my actual inbox, all right? I actually took a picture of my inbox. This is what you get when you Google trading. So no wonder you guys all come in overhyped, undercapitalized, and with expectations that grossly exceed your experience. Because this is what the world is telling you is normal. And this is not normal. This is, I'm gonna repeat it. I know it, 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 it's not normal. I can't think of too many other industries outside of maybe multi-level marketing that have these ridiculous claims in them, okay? And this is just a few. I could have filled this page with like 10 more. This is what you're seeing. So when you come into the business, you think this is realistic. One, I would venture to bet that every one of these is fake. And even if it were real, that's like, that's like uh, I don't know, Mark Zuckerberg opening Facebook. He's like the one out of seven and a half billion. You're not gonna be that person. Not being negative, it's just being honest. You're not gonna be that person, okay? So, where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us in the reality and the truth. Corporations manipulate the market. HFT firms play games, okay? Online hype, false realities. Of course, there's always gotta be somebody, isn't there? Right? False realities. Then, after, Okay, after we get past corporations, HFTs, BS online hype about trading, then we deal with the reality of trading and that's commissions, fees, getting skipped, slippage on trades, platform and tech issues. And once we get past all of those things, then we gotta deal with the man in the mirror. Emotions, lack of knowledge, underfunded, overhyped, ridiculous. So we have three levels to get through. One, not believing what we read online. Then reality, commission, skippage, slippage, platform issues, and then dealing with yourself. Now you wanna know why this business is so hard. See, to be able to sit at home in your pajamas and not drive rush hour traffic, there's probably a reason that a lot of people can't do it because it's hard. All right, so where does that leave us? Turn off the noise, focus on the chart, guys. Just turn off the noise and focus on the chart. It's the only thing that matters. Focus on you, focus on the chart. Don't worry about what MSNBC is saying. Don't worry about what you read online about some guy who turned 12 cents into $12 million. It's not important to you. It's not gonna make you a better trader, okay? Worrying about being shaken out by a high frequency trade, it's not going to make you a better trade. Will you occasionally get shaken out? Yes, you will. But it's not gonna happen enough to matter. It's not gonna happen enough to matter. So, you've come back to the charts. We've come full circle, full circle back to the charts. Charts tell you everything you need to know. Don't mess around with reading hundreds of pages of nonsense or upgrades or downgrades of the news. Just focus on the chart. This stock is breaking out over a lengthy daily, weekly consolidation with a wide range igniting bar followed by a narrow range resting bar and rip. 75 cent stop and the stock went $12. Now, is that a really good example? Yes, of course it is. That's why I put it in here. I wouldn't give you the worst example I've seen. They do stop out too. I show you that as well. But the point is, is this is all you need. It's all you need. Here's a great example. I think I may have used this recently. I got an email from about a week ago. I don't know what the date is on this, but about a week ago. I love it. I'm not gonna read you the whole email, guys, but what is this? It's a beautiful 15 minute four bar play. Wide range bar, narrow range bar, narrow range bar. Rip, entry 480, stop 472. Watch the 15 minute NIO, and I made a mistake. It's supposed to be 480, but there's a topping tail. So basically I put it out there for you anyway, but this is awesome. This is a trader in our chat room who made 1300 bucks this day. 
We traded NIO, or he traded NIO, I traded BY and so did he. Focus on the chart. Wide range igniting bar followed by two narrow range resting bars with a rip. Okay, let's go back again. Same, this is the same trader, literally a day later, the next day. Wide range bar, two narrow range bars, rip, and even an area to add on the buy setup. Why? Daily was nice. Intraday was nice. So it had relative strength to the market and gave you a pattern. There it is. Watch QCOM over 94.10, three bar play. I put this out there in stock twits before it triggered. Okay. Do the math. 751, which is actually 951. It didn't trigger until what? About 10.10. You had 20 minutes to get that. 94.10. Where'd I put? 94.10. Where'd it trigger? 94.10. Focus on the chart. Okay, focus on the chart. Okay. A couple fallacies before I end this. I got a couple more slides. A lot of you guys come into this business and you think, oh, can't go broke taking profits. Affecting real change happens quickly. Profitable trading is only for the lucky. You can't, you can copy your way to success without putting in the actual time. Success comes quickly. You're going to learn from the market. So I don't need an education. Education is too expensive. Pass. I love this one. I, this is one of my favorites. Past success in another field gives you an advantage in trading. It doesn't. It doesn't. I want Forrest Gump to be a trader. He'd be the greatest trader we've ever met. He just does what you're supposed to do. Okay? All of these things are just not true. Okay? But you should be happy they're not true. This is the greatest meritocracy you'll ever see. Why? Because the market doesn't know you doesn't know me, which means it can't possibly care about you or possibly care about me. There's no nepotism in trading. There's no, oh, you graduated from the same college I graduated to. Oh, you're a family member. Oh, you know, I don't know. You're not the same color that you need to be to be in this field. It doesn't matter. Oh, you don't have a college degree. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And you should love that about this business because it's a fair level playing field for everyone. Now, I'm not saying Wall Street doesn't have an advantage. I'm just telling you that you don't have a disadvantage to anybody else that's trading. Okay? That's it. So take a look at these things. None of them are true. Success will not come quickly. You will have to work hard for this. Profitable trading is not for the lucky. It's for the discipline. If you think affecting change, like behavioral change, will happen quickly, it will not. You can absolutely go broke taking profits. It's how most traders do go broke. Okay? It's better to get an education from somebody. I'm not saying me or live traders, go to somebody else. I don't care, but get yourself an education. Imagine that every other field in the world requires one, whether it's a college degree or training on the, on the job or an apprenticeship, every single ditch digging requires some form of training, but you don't think you need one here. Okay, do what you think is best for your business, okay? Think about it, guys, it comes back to the charts. It comes back to the charts. CRWD, breaking out over a prior pivot high, bottoming tail, wide range bar, narrow range bar, rip. Okay, love the little shake out of that, by the way. Just follow the chart. The chart has everything on it that you need. The only thing the chart doesn't have on it is your emotions, your emotions, not the stock's emotions, your emotions, okay? This is the same slide you just saw, but I blew it up because everyone complains. I can't see the charts. They're too small, Jared. I can't see the charts. This is the same exact slide you just saw. Wide range bar, narrow range bar. Love the little shakeout. Moved higher, pulled back, ripped. You could have added. You could have added on that right there. Okay? Just follow the chart. All right? We talked earlier to wrap this up. We talked earlier about market timing. It's really hard to have perfect market timing. This is a recap. It's really hard to have perfect market timing. So to eliminate or help out with not having perfect market timing, we focus on relative strength. Relative strength will keep you out of a lot of trouble because you don't have to have a perfect bias on the market, right? Because the stock you're trading is stronger or weaker than the market, and therefore it's not as or it's less affected to the market. Make sense? So your odds of that trade working are greatly increased because, well, you don't have to care as much about the market, but it's not always an easy call, 
Right? We've talked about that. It's not always a no-brainer, okay? But when you do get it, it's good living, right? I mean, getting good, true relative strength is a great way to trade. Next, before we move into all this other stuff, news, upgrades, downgrades, buy and hold. Don't worry about them. Use the charts to guide you. You know, you can trade off yearly charts, right? You can literally take a long-term 20-year investment off of a yearly buy setup. Yes, you can do that, okay? And you can trade on a one-minute chart and scalp. And Wall Street doesn't care about you, all right? I want you to take that message that Wall Street hates you. They just want your pocketbook, all right? So with that, I'm going to wrap this up today. I hope that you guys, this is actually a bit shorter than I thought it was going to. I'm impressed I got through those slides this fast. Um, I hope you guys learned a little something about market timing, relative strength, the fact that the focus should be on charts, not on anybody else but yourself. Figure yourself out first and the rest will fall in line. Figure yourself out first and the rest will fall in. There is no holy grail. There is no one boilerplate management approach. There's no one boilerplate pattern that's the best. It's what you are good at. Maximize your strengths, minimize your weaknesses, and focus upon improving on the things you're not as good at. Don't go to the driving range and hit the big dog all the time. Focus on your chipping and putting. Focus on the things that you don't want to focus on because they're the things you're probably not as good at. Okay? So that will do it, guys. I hope that um, I hope that you guys enjoyed that lecture. I don't know why this is on here. I want to delete that. That's better. I hope that you guys enjoyed that lecture. Um, and uh, I do these every single Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I do a lecture, and they're usually of genuine quality content. They're not usually fluff. Um, they're usually on a topic that's very valuable or important because this is a serious business that if you don't take seriously, you won't be doing it for very long. All right. So that'll do it for this week's lesson. Hope you guys enjoyed it. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.